Hi everyone, uh, this week I've uh, come back from my holidays and um, I'm finally getting some hall sensors. I spoke to Stevie, the electrician at work, and the ones I gave him was definitely broken. Uh, granted that two of them were broken because I'd smashed them, taken them out, but there was one left and he couldn't check it. So basically we've got his best guess um, at hall sensors. I'm hoping, obviously I'm hoping it's going to work. Uh, I've been out, I've got a few bits and pieces. I'll, I'll list them at the end of the video. Um, there's a few bits and pieces you're going to need to do the job. Uh, I'm seriously not looking forward to it, but it is going to be a, a big, you know, if I do this, I don't think there's anything else I can really go, not do on the bike. Maybe it's rebuild the controller, and I think that's probably going to be my only issue. Um, but we're going to rebuild the the hall sensor is going to rewire it. Um, I've got a bit of an issue because I found two wires that I have no idea what the hell they do. Um, and it's Friday and I can't get in touch with Steve, so I'm not wiring them up straight away. I might have to rewire the wheel again, but you know, it's just one of them things. Trial and error with these. Well, for me it is. And uh, yeah, let's fingers crossed this is gonna, gonna get the thing working. So this is how to put the hall sensors in, uh, people. I'm going to rewire it, you can see this side here, these are the original wires, yeah, I've got all these ones to change but the other side I have taken out, you can just see the whole sensor just sitting on top here, uh, the first one glued in, I think I've come up with an idea, I'm not too sure when I turn the motor around again, why all these wires is like this, um, I don't know how well this is going to show on the video but you're going to take this red here, and we're going to just literally join them across and that will save a lot less wires uh, in the in the motor hub so that i'm doing the whole sensors anyway there is two wires on this uh, that i've just discovered that i'm not 100 percent sure on if any of you guys can uh, help us out so i understand these are whole sensor wires and then i've got these two here which i've only just found but i've got negative and positive coming what looks like straight out of the windings so uh, if any of you guys know what they're for, I'd be uh, grateful to find out what they do. I'm not going to wire them up um, when I change the hall sensors and try them in the bike. There's going to be trial and error with us. I understand I might have to, I'm not too sure what these silver wires do. I might, comes off a red wire, so I might have to solder this one into the, the, the red, into the, into the live. But um, I'm going to build it without that first. I'm going to put it back together. I don't even know if the whole sensor is going to work. I did speak to Stevie. He checked the other ones out and uh, he couldn't find no usable numbers on them. Nothing that would make sense. So, and he did try them electronically as well and it just didn't work. So he's come up with his best guess of which ones I need. I've been um, out of there and I've, I've managed to order them. Sorry, I ordered them yesterday and I've been out of there to collect them. Um, they're not that expensive. They are actually a lot maybe it's cheaper than what you would think they were um and you can get them quite easily as well there's a big company called uh rs rs components and they're right the way across the country and they basically had these in stock so i just had to get time off work this afternoon and uh go down and pick them up so i'm gonna literally i've gotten some good glue uh there's a few of you have told us which types to use but um i've used this stuff for years I'll show you the packet here. Uh, I think it's called Q Bond. I think that's what it is. Yeah, Q Bond it's called. And uh, it's absolutely brilliant stuff. So I'm going to glue my hall sensors in. Get me. You want to see these things, guys? And uh, I'm going to show you them. They are absolutely tiny. And you can't. I can't believe these were the actual reason that the, the bike stopped working. I hope it is anyway, but see how tiny these things are. Yeah, that's an actual hall sensor. Uh, there's a few things to learn about hall sensors as well. I've uh, had to do a bit of research. You get unipole hall sensors and you also get um, bipolar. Uni yeah, unipolar and bipolar hall sensors. Um, they work on different magnetic fields as far as I'm aware, they run uh, like 180, well not quite 180 degrees, but um, and some give off various voltages 
and other ones give off um, a pulse and as far as I can understand the ones I need are the ones I've gotten as the pulse type ones uh, Steve did explain all this but you know Steve's a clever guy so yeah I went into my work and I started telling him about it, uh, what I needed and he was telling us about magnetic fields and start talking about plasma or magnetic plasma and all kinds of things like try to uh, try to understand as best I can but yeah don't actually know what this glue is like with heat, I never thought about that. We might actually end up having issues. Well, good morning guys. Uh, doing quite a bit of work last night. I haven't got to put back together yet, but uh, I'm going to show you what I've been up to. Um, it's a lot of work. Not really that difficult once you strip it all. It is scary to do, but you've got to remember guys, I'm not an electrician or anything. You know, I'm a welder. Um, actually, just being promoted at work, but uh, yeah, that's another story. But um, yeah, I'm basically I'm a welder, and I'm doing these electronical jobs. And to me, this is quite a big job. So if I can do it, I mean, I've put it back together. Um, don't know if it works yet, but you know, if I can wire this up, I'm sure, pretty sure you guys can. Uh, it is scary. Just take your time with it. Make sure you get the right parts. I mean, I've had to wing it a little bit to be perfectly fair but uh yeah i'm going to show you what i've done and fingers crossed it's going to work guys fingers crossed so i just want to show you as well i've been up to um i'm going to try to hold this a bit close to the camera to try and explain it to you guys is the three prongs of each hole sensor mm -hmm. which is these bits here they're in the silicon now at the minute uh, but you got your three prongs on each one on each actual hole sensor you've got a negative and a positive and then you've got a pulse wire Pulse wires are different colours, your negative and positive, so obviously your black and your reds. Your pulse wires are or tend to be the same colour as the wires on your harness that will probably plug into your controller. Uh, so your whole sensor wires on mine are green, blue and yellow. I've kept them the same from the other side. I'm going to explain what I've done on the other side because I see how much cleaner it is on this side. I'll try and hold this close. But basically I've got the three hole sensors in that I don't actually need <coughs> or the other side hole sensors, the spares I've disconnected them absolutely completely no wires left on there at all there's actually a set of wires missing from here because uh, this hole sensor or the pins have snapped but I'm just going to leave these in here and that way it gives us a reference when I come to replace them or say the other side works the side that I've just rewired um, at least then I know where the original wires went and I'm not going to lose track. I've got a little bit of a confusion. Um, remember this is my first time as well. But basically this wire here on this whole sensor was a, a, a blue wire. So I've replaced this one here, which is now the back one, with a blue wire. I'm not 100% sure that's the way it's going to work because I've had to, imagine from this side, turn around to that side, all the wires are different. I guess the middle one's the same. Don't know if I'm confusing it too much. But we're going to put it back together and uh, hoping and praying it's going to work. So I can't wait to see this thing running again. Uh, I'll show you quickly how to put it back in the wheel because uh, there's a bit of a an art to that as well. So you don't nip your fingers or don't damage anything. So it's dead easy. Another one of these home uh, project ideas, but it works a treat. Um, I'm going to do one thing before I do any more and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna clean the, clean it all up make sure there's no silicon on it uh, and make sure I haven't got no dirt in there before I put these two back together so yeah how cool is this I've got one more issue as well I've got the plug for the hall sensors I cut it off so I've got that to sort out and my three phase cable plug to sort out but don't worry it's just time guys it takes a long time to do this it's not necessarily difficult it just takes time but yeah when i get to the point when i've cleaned it i'm gonna uh I'm show you how to put it back together right guys if you see what i've done you've got to have an understanding missus to do this sort of stuff in your house but basically 
place the windings on a pillow. I've checked to make sure that I put the wheel back on the right way around. Um, if you don't want a wheel to spin backwards or anything mad, so I'm not 100 sure that would happen, but yeah, so basically how I do it. Who wires through? Oh, let's see some more filings in there. You know, every time you think this thing's clean, and then you look at it again, it's mad how much stuff gets stuck to the magnets. You don't want to make sure everything's absolutely immaculate. Right. So basically, this way it keeps your fingers well out, truly out the way. Hold it close. <coughs> Push. That's it, guys. It's back in. Bit easy. Put the casings back on. Wire it back up. Bloody fingers crossed. It, uh, it starts working again. Let's see. Well, guys, I'm absolutely over the moon. I've put all the wires and everything back together, soldered all the plugs and everything back on, and put it together very loosely, may I add, but uh, it's actually moved. I'm going to turn around to show you what the bike's like at the minute. I've still got a lot of work left to do, but it's alive. Woohoo! It's alive. Would you believe them tiny little chips inside of the wheel is actually made? The bike come back alive. Can you see how much wiring I've got left to do? I have completely stripped this bike. You want to see how much mess I've got going on as well. And somehow you see there I've got a flat front tyre. So it looks like I've got a puncture to fix. Got lots of work left to do. But yeah, there we go. All sensors are done. Um, if you have any issues, guys, you need to tackle them. Or I know there's at least one of my subscribers who's uh, having problems with his bike. Um, if it's not your hall sensors, I would check your throttle out if you're using a throttle. Um, that was my next part of the call if these hall sensors didn't work. So I'm absolutely over the moon. I've just replaced them, took my time with it, put the wires and whatnot in, and it's just worked. <laughs> I'm one happy man. I just want to let you know about the cost of doing all this. I did say at the beginning of the video I would uh, give you a, a tool list and a price list. You're not going to believe how cheap these hall sensors were, guys. You're talking £3.20 for all six hall sensors. That is it, including VAT. Uh, on top of that, I've had to buy silicon. I'm just trying to think what else I've had to buy. And I've had to re buy, uh, buy plugs and some more heat shrink. So, total cost to replace all the hall sensors, no more than. 25 30 quid uh, it's taken us a long time to do it of course you've got to you know take in consideration how long it's going to take you but uh it's well worth doing and that's a 600 pound wheel and i've fixed it for less than 30 quid so i am absolutely over the moon unfortunately we've got mega rain today we've got a major storm come over england um so once the weather's changed i'll be out again <laughs> happy days happy days <laughs>